and uh, I'd like to invite Alexandra Imas, Senior Director from ImageSat International in Israel, very efficient company, which I don't know how without all these laws still manages to work quite successfully in the market. Dear colleagues, let us ask our colleagues to share. Alexander, you have the floor. Good morning, I represent uh, Image South. A few words about my company. We work in the space industry for 20 years now. We successfully launched two satellites from the Russian Cosmodrome. One is a 70 centimeter resolution satellite. Plus, we're working on uh, designing other satellites with high resolution and a nano. I wanted to tell you about our designing plans for marine monitoring. How can space driven data be used for that? Marine monitoring is a very interesting subject that uh, many countries uh, are worried about. There's a, an abundance of uh, issues, illegal fishing, oil spills, illegal migration, military conflict, and since the marine space is huge, The data from space is most effective. What kind of uh, data do we typically use? We use UAVs, MPAs, uh, radars, shore radars. But the biggest problem is the, how much uh, area you can capture and the high cost. Of course, we don't intend to say that we totally replace this data. What we propose is some extra data that can uh, bring you more information. How does the system work? It relies on a lot of resources, primarily uh, space data. That include SAR satellite, AIS satellite, AAS is an automatic uh, identification uh, ship system. By law, ships that are greater than a certain amount should use uh, transmitters to let everyone know what flags they are sailing under, where they are headed, but only 50% or less follow it because they are doing illegal activities or because these are military ships. We can also use data f from our clients. Besides, uh, we rely on data from open source data to tap into some uh, blacklists that uh, vessels may be in. So AAS uh, radar SAR correlation takes place. Besides, it's not enough just to put all the data in one place. Certain uh, data processing is required to bring it uh, in line with each other to, so that they could speak the same language. What do we do about it? One of the ways is to develop an algorithm to detect vessels on an image. And if there is plenty of images, you need some interpretation help 
so our algorithm helps detect targets on SAR images for example besides AIS data creates certain problems AIS data doesn't arrive continuously data may come uh, with uh, time lags so we use a, a dedicated algorithm uh, that helps uh, link image uh, with the actual data. Besides, uh, we're working not only on detection by uh, classification of ships. Plus, uh, we've had some success with the ship behavior algorithm. We used it in South America. Why would you need that algorithm to detect precisely what kind of vessel it is? We use optical images that are smaller than syn synthetic ones. So we apply an algorithm that uh, studies the behavior, the conduct, and the history of a ship in a certain area we locate a ship's whereabouts after a certain time so uh, we can engage uh, satellites of other companies to track the passage of that uh, v vessel subsequently I wanted to share with you two small examples of how it work, how it works. For example, following uh, some detection in a given area, we let's say detect a suspected ship. We derive some information uh, from our system if uh, a ship uh, deactivates its AAS sensor or if a blacklisted ship enters a certain area. So we were tracking a certain ship, let's say, for several days and we found that at certain times the ship decelerates abruptly. It sails very s slowly along certain areas. So what we figured out is that uh, poten potentially that uh, ship is doing illegal fishing. Also we can use open source intelligence. We found that the ship uh, is blacklisted that its license expired back in 2013 and it has been caught uh, catching fish illegally on several occasions sometimes it was, it was caught uh, offloading uh, the catch onto other ships I will also give you an example which we did uh, in a uh, South China Sea. There are some uh, islands that several countries dispute over. Scarborough Shoal, 230 k kilometers off the Philippines shore. So we use AAS detectors to see uh, which ships are located in an area of interest. Then we image uh, the territory with SAR satellite. We do correlation. Uh, green dots represent AIS sensors, and uh, yellow dots show all the ships. So when the yellow and the green match, uh, it most likely this is a legal vessel. The next stage we use uh, 
optic imagery for vessel identification, vessels that do not use AIS to provide uh, a more detailed report to our clients, for example. We can use open source intelligence or the customer's data to ident identify the type and classification of a ship. That's it. I'll tr I try to be brief today. Are there any questions? Maybe Scanex has some questions. I know it's working on a geo portal under the na national system. Thank you. Very interesting. Where do you get your AIS data? What satellites? I forgot to mention, we also have AIS equipment on board. So do you use Canadian services? And one of the companies is Orpcom. The other, I don't remember. Typically, we buy data from two companies. This is uh, for better correlation. So we buy from two companies because sometimes they're missing. One company misses all, all the data. May not have all the data. So my standard question, indeed a very in informative talk. I was wondering, where do you make money on? Who, who buys from you? I know who you, buy, who you buy from, but who buys from you? There are two types of customers at this stage. First, it's a civil customer, typically Ministry of Agriculture, responsible for fishing. So we can uh, deliver daily or monthly reports on the status of uh, economic waters of a given state so that uh, they could catch a vessel doing illegal fishing. In February we did uh, a project helping locate and detain several illegal vessels so a, a motorboat raided them and found that they uh, didn't have uh, valid licenses. The second option is the military. The military sometimes n need to know what's uh, happening because not all the countries uh, can uh, monitor l large territories 24 hours a day. But the state is a fiscal service because, you know, they, they are checking what ships enter and exit uh, their waters. You are outside of the government, right? You can provide uh, your service globally. I don't understand how can I use your services. Uh, we are doing a project with uh, Scanex for fishing purposes. The uh, objective is to check what uh, vessels enter the uh, water area. As I said, you can uh, we can generate a daily or a monthly report about the status of uh, water environment. We sell reports. Do you have any bias from Russia? We don't work in Russia, but you're most welcome. Now you have this opportunity. A 
Alexander Chikorin Rockers. You monitor marine environments. Have you ever found uh, any aggregations of industrial fish? Unfortunately not. Maybe uh, hyperspectral and optical modes will uh, do the trick. Alexander, may I venture a question? Uh, during uh, a recent Euro Consult session, your CEO made an interjection that uh, what you offer will be an alternative uh, to big, big data analysis that some panelists uh, proclaimed as a certain mainstream. Can you tell us more your understanding? What kind of algorithms are being developed and are they indeed an alternative? Do you see where I'm driving at here? If I made myself clear, I mean, it's a tough one. Could you comment on it? Our company, like many other space, space imagery distributors, uh, made a turn. Now we're offering not just images, but rather results that more and more clients are after. We have a division on uh, data processing now. Several uh, people developing algorithm because we believe that it is uh, an important decision, not only because the information keeps growing and uh, soon enough we'll simply r run out of people to process such big data, even at large companies. Development of algorithms is required for more precise data. I don't think there is any other way you can do it. For example, correlation from different sources. Thank you. Sorry, I just can speak in English. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for care about uh, China, such as Taiwan and the China North Sea. <clears throat> anyway, I'd like to uh, ask you uh, one question. Uh, how could you uh, estimate the accuracy of your uh, result? Uh, as uh, we all know that uh, uh, the, uh, the accuracy of uh, your analysis uh, uh, based on the <coughs> original data. Uh, I just say that um, the ship is not so um, can, uh, so, so good uh, to 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 watch. Uh, how could you do that? Uh, uh, that ship is from China or from Philippines? Uh, that's my proper question. Okay. Thank you. So, for a more accurate estimation, for example, if we using AIS, this is the reason I spoke earlier. We use few sources uh, for AIS information just to make sure that uh, the original data is accurate. This is one point. We starting from AS. Now, from the vessels, uh, we use an electro-optic with very high resolution, and usually is less than one meter. For example, our satellite is 70 centimeters, 
and because most of our guys uh, from image processing have experience from the army, uh, they have experience, a lot of experience, and they can very easy to identify uh, vessels uh, based on the type. This is first, it's very easy. And then to classify based on open source intelligence. Uh, for example, we use uh, Facebook, we use Twitter, uh, we collect information from all over the world. Uh, for example, we use even a, a coast cameras that usually take picture of the vessels they going through some channels. Uh, so the currently the identification is doing we are doing manually uh, because it's very accurate work, and uh, usually because of a lot of experience, uh, we can identify very accurate what exactly ves what what is the vessel, what is the type of the vessel, and is the origin of the vessel. Спасибо большое. Давайте поблагодарим Александра. Спасибо.